In this video, we will show you how to replace your lower control arm on this Nissan Altima. This is part of your front suspension located behind your front wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friend, let's get started on our job. The first thing we need to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle with the suspension hanging. Once you've done that, we'll remove all five of our 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that we have the wheel out of the way, let's have a look in the center area here. We are going to have to remove the axle nut. Generally on this, there should be a locking cotter pin locking this nut in place. Go ahead and remove that and set it aside for recycling. After that, we'll remove the lock from around this area. We'll give that a quick inspection, set it aside. Use your 32 millimeter socket to remove the axle nut. If you're using a hand tool of some sort and you found that this wanted to spin, you could bring it closer to the ground, put a bar across this area diagonally to hold it from spinning or have a second person just go ahead and step on the brake. Continue on with a hammer and punch directly in the center of the axle. We're going to give this a couple bonks to try to break this free from the wheel bearing. Once you have movement in this area, you can continue. Now let's have a look along the back side of the rotor. We're going to be looking for where the outer tie rod end connects to the steering knuckle. Remove the locking cotter pin and then your 19 millimeter mounting nut. When you remove that, you'll find that it also had a washer. Now we can start the nut on there, just a couple threads. Now we'll use a hammer, cause some vibration, and that should break this free. When doing so, be extremely careful not to cause any damage to the outer tie rod end. Set this aside. Moving along from there, we'll be separating the lower ball joint from the lower aspect of the steering knuckle. This is found just underneath your axle. Now to do this, you're going to find that you have an 18 millimeter headed bolt that makes its way through from the rear towards the front. We'll use an 18 millimeter on both sides of this. Let's get this to break free. We'll continue on with a hammer and punch, drive this straight through. We'll use some penetrant in this area. Now we'll be using a chisel and a hammer. We have to separate this area in between the two portions of the steering knuckle. When you're doing so, you only want to separate it enough that we can start bringing the ball joint down and through here. The stud makes its way up through the center. We don't want to continue pressing it in too far and end up cracking anything. Now we can start separating the ball joint from the knuckle. When doing so, there is a couple different ways of doing so. You can use a pickle fork and come right inside this area, but generally you could cause damage to the knuckle or the ball joint. Otherwise, you could find a hook like this, slide that right over that lower control arm. Now we'll make our way through this slot, up against the control arm, and gently start pulling this down and out of place. With that separated, carefully swing the knuckle out of the way. With the lower ball joint separated from the steering knuckle, we can move along to our two 21 millimeter headed bolts that are holding the control arm to the subframe. You'll find for each of these bolts, they come through from the bottom towards the top. Along the top, there is also a 21 millimeter mounting nut for each. I'll use my wrench up along the top here. Two of those together. I'll use my wrench along the top here again. Ah! 
As you can tell, the rearward bolt is considerably longer than the forward bolt. Now we can take hold of that control arm and remove it from the vehicle. There it is, friend. Now let's clean and inspect the subframe where the brand new control arm will sit. You can use a brush, possibly some compressed air if you need it. Now we can prepare to install our brand new lower control arm. Now once you feel as though you have it in position, you can go ahead and start in each of those two mounting bolts. We'll start the mounting nuts on. After both of them are started and bottomed out, you can torque them to 118 foot-pounds. Let's get these torqued to 118 foot-pounds. Now let's pry down on this lower control arm so we can start sliding the ball joint stud into the bottom of the knuckle. While doing so, we want to pay attention to the axle and make sure that it is sliding into the back side of the wheel bearing. There we are. We'll just have a peek up inside this area, make sure that it's completely seated. We can remove this. With that ball joint pressed into place, we'll continue on with our mounting bolt. Typically, it is a good idea to replace this bolt. If you are not replacing it, you also should use some blue thread locker. We'll start this through, start it in position, and then torque it to 72 foot-pounds. We'll install the outer tie rod end to the steering knuckle. Install the washer. We'll start the nut on there, snug it up, torque it to 25 foot-pounds. We'll install the locking cotter pin. Just want to slide that straight on through the stud and peen it over. Now it's time to reinstall the axle nut. We'll take this and bottom it out against the wheel bearing. You never want to use an impact tool on this because you could cause damage to your wheel bearing. We'll just make sure this is snug and then we'll get it a little closer to the ground so we can torque it. Now let's torque this to 135 foot-pounds. You'll find that I have a pry bar coming diagonally down through this area, down to the ground to hold this in place. Now we can torque this. The next thing we'll do is put on our lock here. When we put this in position, we're trying to align some of the castled holes here with the hole that goes through the center of the axle. Just spin it as needed until something lines up pretty close to perfect here. Let's put in our locking cotter pin. Okay, let's install our wheel. Start on all five of your 21 millimeter lug nuts. We'll bottom them out and get the wheel back on the ground. With the wheel back on the ground, we'll torque each of these to 83 foot pounds in a crisscross manner. Torqued. Okay, friend, we've got our vehicle back together. At this point, hop in it, take it for a road test, listen for funny noises, and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.